Okay, guys, um, start off by saying it was gut-wrenching gut not to be able to be out there in the second half of that game. Um, you know, uh, obviously, uh, uh, there was a play that, uh, you know, we had overturned that I disagreed with, and uh, that cost me a flag. Um, and then on the next play, there was another flag. Nothing was said. And then on the f next play after that, the, the play was blown dead uh, before the ball was recovered. And, uh, you know, I asked the referee, I said, I mean, the, you, know, the, you know, the play was blown dead. So how do we know who recovered it? Everybody stopped. And uh, that was what it was. Um, to tell you the truth, I was pretty calm at that point, and uh, there was no bad language or anything. And uh, all I said to them was, I said, guys, we just got to do better. And that got me another flag. And, uh, you know, that is what it is. And, you know, if I kept my mouth shut and didn't say anything, obviously I wouldn't have been in that situation. So that's my responsibility. That's on me. Um, and uh, the rest is what it is. Uh, as I said, it was gut-wrenching and disappointing. Um, and, uh, you know, just not acceptable. So um, that's that story. In terms of the game, I felt that, uh, you know, we, we had a poor start. Um, obviously, you know, we, knew, we knew they had great skill, quarterback, receiver combinations. They were able to get the ball down the field over our head. And I thought, once again, on offense, we were kind of herky-jerky. Uh, made a few plays and couldn't make a couple of plays. Uh, we turned the ball over too much on offense. We let up too many plays on defense. Um, don't feel that that was any of our finest hours. Um, I thought that for most of the season, we made really, even with all the injuries and everything, I thought we made a lot of improvement. There was probably only a couple of games that I didn't feel we did, and this was one of them. Um, and I feel like we played poorly tonight. And that's my responsibility. And because uh, I've seen some great growth here. And I'm really excited about moving forward with, with this team. Um, they have a great mentality. Uh, there's a lot of love in that locker room for our seniors, uh, for each other, a lot of belief. Um, on where we're headed, although I don't think tonight was reflective of that. Um, and, uh, you know, a real great mentality and an urgency to want to get going, which is a nice thing to see and feel in the locker room. And uh, so I'm very, very excited about where we're headed. I'm very, very disappointed in, in, in tonight, obviously. That's an understatement. And uh, so as we move forward, we continue to recruit, we continue to build and we continue to grow and we accentuate some of the high points. It's interesting, you know, uh, Trey McBride, fifth all-time Division I receiving yards. Uh, Stoney, I think the best punt average in college football. Uh, I think our, uh, I think Caden Camper set the field goal record for Colorado State. Last week we set, we were, we, uh, we're second all-time passing yards ever at Colorado State. Um, there's been a lot of individual things that have been outstanding this year. But I still think the biggest thing that we have to do is play complementary football. And, uh, and I think that's where I feel we're, we're wildly inconsistent in the complementary football category. And uh, we saw great things in special teams. We saw great things on offense. We saw great things on defense. I don't know how many times we saw all three great together. And that's something that is really what we have to dive into in the off season. Because you see the capability, but I don't think you can see the consistency enough. Um, but with all that, uh, there's great belief on our team. And, uh, and I know we're, we're headed we're in a great direction where we want to be. Obviously, you know, disappointed in today and disappointed in our wins. but. Not disappointed in the progress we made, not disappointment in how close we are really to being completely different right now record-wise. So we've got to get that addressed. So with that, I'm happy to answer any questions. Steve, did you feel tonight's start had, was kind of the accumulative effect of what had hurt you the last couple of weeks leading into this game? Yeah, I mean, you know, we started out the night tonight without Jack Howell. He, you know, hurt his shoulder in practice this week. Uh, we lost Marshawn Cameron. I mean, it's been a little bit of a revolving door. We, we, we need to grow and develop in the back end. We've got some really good young players, um, but they're young. 
and, uh, and, and, and I think there's great room for, for, for growth there. But I think, you know, I know at the halfway point of Boise, we lost the center of our defense. And we struggled to get our stinger back with that and never really recovered it, nor did we recover to any level of full health at any linebacker position from that point forward. So we had a young developing back end, which we knew. We had a pretty strong front end, which we knew. And then the middle cracked and really couldn't bring that back and did not bring that back, really, anywhere near full strength. So that compromised us a little bit in the run defense and it compromised us a little bit in the underneath coverage to a secondary that was already a little bit you know, inexperienced and young to begin with. So that collectively, I thought, hurt us down the home stretch on defense. And, you know, it's hard to play that way. And I was asked on a radio show about the run game and stuff. And one of the things that happens is when you're, when you're you know, first of all, in a run game, both tailbacks sustained high ankle injuries this year, which really set them back. But I thought that um, in a run game, what happens sometimes is, when you, when, when you feel like you know, you're having a hard time getting off the field, you have a tendency when you're, when you're calling plays to push a little bit in a different direction. And sometimes in a run game, you need to be more patient and consistent. And it's hard to do when you see the, the, the scores clicking. And you have players like Trey that you're trying to get the ball to, or Dante, you're trying, well, we didn't have Dante most of the season, but you know, to get the ball to. And I think you get a little bit out of rhythm and a little bit out of whack. And um, you can be a little bit more patient in a run game when you're playing great on the other side. And so I think when that started the slide, I think we got a little bit herky-jerky there. So, you know, it's, it's a complement. That's why I said it's a, it's a complementary football issue. And some of it, we have to look at it all. But obviously some of it came with, you know, some bad injuries and things at the wrong time. And, uh, and we, you know, it comes down to depth. It comes down to all those things and the ability to handle that, you know. So uh, I thought we lost momentum in the midpoint of the season, and, and the injuries help spiral that a little bit. Steve, obviously there are a lot of fans that are frustrated with the game tonight and then the you know, results of the season overall. Just what do you say to them you know, moving forward about you know, where things are and why things you know, will be different next year? Well, I think you can see why they'll be different if you followed the whole season. You can see where we were and a lot of high points in the season, a lot of great things that got done during the season. I mean, at one point before uh, – before the Boise game, I think people were awfully – couldn't stop talking about our defense, right? And, uh, and I think uh, there was a lot of explosiveness on our offense. And so I think you saw a lot of high points. It's on the film. It's on the video. Um, but I think what you feel, and rightfully so, is a slide at the end of the year. And I just explained why I think that happened. So why do we feel better about next year? Well, feel better about next year because, I, I've, as I said to the team, I think we're right here. I don't think we're right here. Even though you say, well, your wins don't show that. I know, but I'm looking at the whole thing. And I think we're right here. I think, you know, I don't like tonight. But <laughs> we were three wins going in tonight. Could easily have been six wins going in tonight. And I think that's evident. And I think as you're rebuilding a program, okay, you know, basically, you know, we've played, what, uh, 15 games, 16 games? That's what we've played, 16 games. It's not even a season and a half. And uh, we've got work to do. But didn't we know that? I mean, when I came in here, there was a lot of work to be done. I mean, a lot, not a little. Okay? And maybe everybody doesn't quite understand that. But a lot. And we're in the process of doing that work. And, uh, and yet, within that, if you really know football and you watch football, we're that close. So now what we need to do is just have a great offseason, do a great job recruiting, great job in the transfer portal, keep building our program. And uh, I think if you talk to coaches in the league, they tell you the same thing. I can tell you they have. They've talked to me before and after games. You know, they know what's going on here. So I don't think tonight was a great reflection of that. I'm not going to look you in the eye and tell you that. I just think we played poorly tonight. You know, and I'm not going to go through why I think all the reasons why. I mean, at the end of the day, I didn't do a good enough job this week getting this team prepared. Those are the facts of that. That's where that's at. And, uh, and why? I got to look at the tape and I got to evaluate that. Why? 
You know, why? why, why? Where, where, where could we have done a better job to be more prepared for this game? Um, you know, we've evaluated all the other games, and uh, I think I have a pretty good idea of what, what transpired there. But I never felt like we were never in this game tonight. No, it wasn't, that's not real. So, um, you know, those are my thoughts on that. But uh, to the fan base, you know, we're going to keep grinding. We're going to keep building. We're, you know, we're going to get this right, you know. But, you know, I understand everybody wants everything right now. I understand that. But this is a total rebuild. And it's going to take a little time, guys. I don't say a lot usually about stuff like that. But those are the facts. 85 scholarships, 35 of them when I got here are not here now. It's almost half your football team, okay? So I've, got, I have, I've had to deal with that. And I'm going to keep dealing with that. And I like where we're headed. And I'm excited about where we're headed, you know? But, you know, you sit here and you think, well, in basically a season and a quarter or a season and a third, it's all going to be fixed up? It's a little bit unrealistic. Uh, let's, let's be honest there, okay? Let's not live in la-la land. That's not right. What else? Well, Steve, you said specifically there are things in which this program is in a better place mm -hmm. than a year ago. Yeah. Name where are you better now than Thanksgiving last year, in your mind? Well, I think what I see was great growth in our run defense this year. We were one of the top-ranked run defenses in the, until we lost our inside linebackers. We were one of the top-run defenses in the conference. We were one of the sack leaders in the conference on defense, right? And our overall defense, until we got eviscerated with injuries, was top three, four in the, in the conference. Offensively, going into this game, we were 45th in the country. I'm sorry, 41st, 41st in the country. I mean, that's terrible. I mean, overall offensive numbers, excuse me, I've got a lozenge in my mouth because I'm not feeling great, but um, I mean, they're pretty good, okay? And so those are all, those stats are real. Now, did we crumble in some of those areas at the end? Yeah, but I, I think you can identify why that happened. I don't, I don't think that's like really hard to see. So you've seen the high. I mean, we held Iowa to, I don't know, how many yards rushing? Under 60. I mean, you, you saw what I saw. I mean, there's been some great highs this year. And, of course, there's been some really big lows. Today was a really big low, okay? But I think on both sides of the ball, you've seen some, some really good highs. We played a really good schedule this year. You know, and, and, and I think you don't see behind the scenes – the growth and development of the program, the camaraderie, the love and trust in the program, the belief in the program, learning how to play with and for each other. You guys don't have that great backdoor view of that. You know, there's a lot of things changing within this program. And, 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 there's still, and there's still a ways to go. But I would tell you that if you spoke with the kids on this team, they would reiterate that to you. Um, so, you know, last year we had four games. That's all we had. It was, and it was kind of a mess, the four games, you know, and now this year we had a full season and I'll say it again. And I believe it. I'm not a pie in the sky. I'm not a smiley face sticker guy in my, today was standing. I don't, I'm not, today was not we we're that close, that close to having a six, seven win season, but we have to learn how to do that. Vanderbilt, Utah state. Boise, I mean, can you? we played as good as you can play in the first half of Boise. I mean, it's just, you know, it, it, it's second half of Hawaii. I mean, wow. I mean, there's just a lot, you know. And, uh, you know, so we're, we're, we're pretty close. Of course, you can paint that glass half full, half empty, however you want to. That's fine. At the end of the day, I believe we're going to have a heck of a football team. And that's what I believe. You, know, you can share that belief or you cannot. And at the end of the day, it's our job to show it in wins and losses. And that'll, that'll happen. You know, and, that's, and that's where we're at. But when you build a program, 
you know, it takes a little bit more than a year and a third, okay? Especially when you're coming into a program where there's so much upheaval and so much turnover. So I think I would say be patient and understand that, you know? And, uh, but I'm, I'm, real, I'm real happy with a lot of the growth and development, you know? We've changed completely who we are in terms of trying to be a more physical team, uh, both sides of the ball. But again, and they say, well, oh, this is a run team. We threw for 527, the second most throwing yards in the history of the school last week. So I think there's, there's, there's plenty all over. It just choose on how you, it's how you choose on how you want to look at it. You want to look at it negative? You're going to look at it negative. You want to look at it positive? You're going to look at it positive. I look at it from what I see off the tape. So, you know, that's where I think we are. And I'm excited about where we're headed. And, you know, we've had some disappointing moments, but I've really felt strong about where we are and where we're headed the whole season. You know, again, today, I don't think you can feel good about much of anything today. And, and, I, and I put that squarely on my shoulders today. That's my, that's on me. I know, I know you didn't get much time with Trey and Ryan, mm -hmm. but how much did you appreciate getting to coach two guys like that that were among the best in their position in NCAA history? Yeah, I mean, I loved it. I've, I've coached a lot of great players. And, um, and I love Trey and I love Stoney. Those guys are great dudes. They're fun to be around. And they're loyal guys. And, I mean, they're, they're CSU Rams. And uh, they're just good people. And uh, I'm excited for them. You know, um, I think that, you know, if you talk to them, they're excited for us. So uh, that's been a lot of fun. And uh, I'm looking forward to the growth and development of guys we have. You know, we saw some guys out here in the back half of this game get in there. Tanner Arkin's going to be a hell of a player now. You know, as Trey leaves, we've got a, a young guy that is a lot in his mold. And, uh, and I think that uh, uh, Caden, Camper, has done a lot of good things punting the football. You haven't seen that yet. You know, he's got a strong leg, and a lot of people were skeptical of what his season was going to be like, and I thought, I thought very, very positive. I thought our special teams got a lot better and, and developed. Of course, at the end, we got a little bit, not bad, just flatlined a little bit because we had such an influx. When you lose your linebackers, you lose a lot of your special teams. But even with all that, I saw some growth and de development in our special teams. I was really proud of that. And obviously, Stoney and Ryan are part of that. And, and, and Joe DeLine and, and Ross. And so that's, that's been a lot of fun. And, and I think that's going to continue to get better. I, I think we got some dynamic young freshmen that can uh, – really help us along those lines. So excited about that as well. Thanks, Coach. Thank you.